Uh, we're in a series uh, called All in the Family, and it's been so much fun. Can I tell you that my favorite part about this series is all of the interview videos that have been happening. Are you guys loving those? I'm loving those. And uh, because you... You get to hear from Elliot and I pretty often, Elliot more often than myself, um, but you get to hear us, you know our stories a little bit, but what I love is that we're getting to see behind the scenes into some of the team members who make up the part of Lifeline Church. These are people that you see, you've interacted with, but we're getting to hear part of their stories, and I love it because we're all becoming, li- we're, you know, we're lifelong followers of Jesus, and so we've got real stuff that's going on, but we're serving Jesus and moving with Jesus through those things, and that's encouraging, and that's hopeful, and so there's going to be another video today. If you're like, what the heck are you talking about? You'll see the video at the end, and then I encourage you to go back online. You can find us on YouTube, Facebook, and you can rewatch the whole message, or you can just scroll to the end. <laughs> and in the last 20 minutes or so, you can find uh, the videos and the interviews that have been happening. But today we're talking about, so we've talked about marriage, we talked about parenting, and today we're going to talk about dating. Boop, boop. And you're in the house, and you're thinking, well, that's not my season in life. Let me tell you that everything I'm going to say today applies to you no matter what space in life you are. If you're already married, if you have no intention of dating, there are things that are going to impact your heart and your life today, but we're specifically looking in the realm of dating. And so when it comes to dating, one of the biggest questions that people have when they're looking to get married is, how do I find the right person? How do I find the right person? Anybody who's married, you remember asking yourself that question, how do I find the right person? So I'm just going to, we're going to jump right in 100%. I'm going to give you your first blank if you're following along and taking notes, is you can't marry the right person if you are dating the wrong one. <laughs> like sick burn. Okay, you can't marry the right person if you're dating the wrong one. That's common sense. But still, we, we stay there, you know, because uh, it's easy. And then the other question is... Maybe we're not asking, but we should be asking, is how do I become the right person? Most of us aren't asking that question. We're just looking for the right person. Uh, And so we can ask ourselves instead, how do I become the right person? And then here's another thing. If you're taking notes, fill this in. You don't typically attract what you want. You attract what you are cool. You're like, I don't, I like that one less. You don't typically attract what you want. You attract what you are. Uh, so we're just going to let that sink in for a little bit. So the, the overarching idea then is become the type of person. Oh, okay. Hold on. Wrap your brain around this. Become the type of person. The person you are looking for is looking for. <laughs> become the type of person the person you're looking for is looking for and we'll get into all that stuff uh, but when it comes to dating world and dating relationships it seems like there are so many conflicting messages especially if you're a part of the church I mean if you don't believe in Jesus and you're just doing your own thing like who cares you can do whatever the heck you want but when you're a Christian and you're dating it's like Ugh, like is it even legal you know and what what can I do uh, because you hear like uh, you know Okay, growing up in the church, I grew up in the church. There's this whole idea of courting versus dating, like courting. What, what's courting? You want to take me to court before we do this? Like, what is that? Uh, please explain it to me. So there's courting, there's dating. Maybe uh, your pastor, or your leader, or your friend circle, your people in your life groups are going to tell you, you should make a list of all the things you want in a person. And then that's what you're looking for. You know, so you're being hypercritical about, or you're checking all these boxes. And then someone else will tell you, no, rip up the list and just trust God. So you're like, okay, I wrote the list. I broke up the list. I went to court. Like I did all the things. Uh, you know, you're going to use an app because in this day and age, like we're not going to go see people. We're going to find them on a screen. And then we're going to trust that their screen profile is accurate. And even if we dated them for a year, we're going to trust that once we get married, they are the person they said they were, you know, like, and then they'll tell you don't use an app because again, you're not trusting God. He'll just, they'll just drop into your world and your life. And so dating, it's like, opinions. You know, it's the world of opinions. And you can get real flustered and insecure, I think, in that space, depending on who you're in. So it's like, I'm just going to count. I'm going to keep it a secret for a while, you know, because I don't need all the input. I don't need all the information uh, in that dating world. So instead of, I'm not going to answer any of those questions and tell you how, how to do that, because you don't need any more opinions coming at you. What I am going to do is I'm going to encourage us to go to the one who made relationships. And you know what? You can hear his voice and you can weed out all the fluff and you can navigate through that going to the one who made relationships, who's going to minister and speak to your heart about how we do this thing called dating. Amen? Amen. Okay. So culture tells us probably that the big win in relationships is marriage. Culturally, like if you watch movies, um, basically if you watch movies, okay, uh, that 
or even in the church world, the biggest win in your life is being married and finding the one. And even if it's not marriage, like you never tie the knot, it's finding the one and living the rest of your life together with that person. Like I have arrived. I have won. I have become a grown up. I have entered into the big leagues when I found the one and I'm married and I have that person. Uh, and the world tells us that. And sometimes even in the church, we feel that way because it's like, I, uh, until I'm married, I'm not allowed to play in the big leagues in leadership. Uh, until I'm married, I'm not allowed to connect on, on a certain level because marriage is like the be-all, end-all. And I want to I kind of dismiss, that's, that's a myth, that's a lie, and I kind of want to break that apart today because Scripture will show us, you can write this down, that being married is not our purpose in life. Being married is not our purpose in life, meaning... Because what happens is if you think being married is your purpose in life, then you will feel like you're never succeeding and you've never arrived because you've never been married. And can I tell you that Jesus created you as a whole person, so whether or not you get married, you have a purpose to fulfill, and God has filled you with things. Uh, so I want to dismiss that very, very early on. But I want to read a scripture first. Actually, and to think about this. Who's our Savior? What's his name? Was he ever married? No, and he fulfilled his purpose. And then there's, so our Savior is single, by the way, guys, people. Um, he's Jesus, he's God, he's God in the flesh. That's a little bit weird. Uh, and then there's John the Baptist who came the way, pre preparing the way before him. John the Baptist, never married. Paul, who wrote most of the New Testament, never married. And so being married wasn't the be-all, end-all definition of success and, and fulfilling God's purpose and calling in their life. So I'm, I'm setting that up. We're going to get back to it later. But First Corinthians, in 7, 7 and 8 says this. Paul is writing, he's single, and he's writing to the church, and he says this. I wish that all of you were as I am, but each of you has your own gift from God. One has this gift, another has that. Now to the unmarried and the widows, I say it is good for them to stay unmarried as I do. So what I wanted to point out there is essentially when he's talking about a gift, Paul is saying that singleness is is a gift. And if you're in the room and you're single, you're going, can I exchange that gift? <laughs> like that's not the one I wanted. But for him, it was a gift because he could go anywhere. He could do anything and he could fulfill the purpose of God. Like for him, it was traveling. So he was traveling a lot. He was ministering the word of God. And so he considered singleness. It was a gift that God had given him because there was passions and desires and things that Paul wanted to accomplish. And so he saw that singleness as, as a gift. And so for some of us in the room, um, and I'm not saying, we're going to talk about dating, so we're going to talk about how to do that, and it is good, and it is fine, that desire to be married, but for some of us, I think maybe the Lord wants to break off some things that say you're, you're not enough because you're not married. Um, you're not enough because you haven't found the right person. When God says you are 100% exactly who you, I created you to be. And so consider this time and this space in life a gift and do the things I'm asking you to do and go the places and consider and see the amount of freedom uh, that you have. So our purpose in life, if being married is not our purpose in life, then what the heck is? Our purpose in life, you can write this down, is to live with undivided devotion to Jesus undivided devotion to Jesus. So it doesn't matter who you are, what space you're in in life. Our purpose is to live with undivided devotion to Jesus. And so instead of looking for the right person, we want the Lord to help us become who it is that he's created us to be. So there's three qualities that we want God to work in us before we get married. If we're in the dating scene, we're looking to get married, there are three, three qualities uh, that we need before marriage. And I'm going to put them all up on the screens. You can say them with me. The first one is to be secure in Christ. Everybody say, be secure in Christ. Be secure in Christ. The second thing we want is to be strong in character. Everybody say, strong in character. Strong in character. And the third thing we want to be is planted in community. Everybody say, planted in community. So we're going to just break these apart, talk about them one at a time. So number one, secure in Christ. We want to be secure in Christ. So here's a big, big, big idea. If you want to end up married and happy, start single and secure. <laughs> If you want to end up married and happy, start single and secure. Um, we'll get there. Okay, but a blessed relationship, if we want a blessed marriage, a blessed relationship, it's not that we're, we're, we shouldn't be looking for the relationship to fulfill us. If we go into any relationship and we're expecting it to fill a void in our life, we will end up severely disappointed. Not only that, but we'll probably end up in severe conflict because we will never get what it is that we're looking for from that other person. So we need to start single and secure, which means we need to find our security in Christ. Um, 
you can write this down. But insecure people need more and settle for less. Insecure people need more and settle for less. Don't raise your hand if you're sitting next to the person or you're dating them. But have you ever dated an insecure person? They need everything all the time. They need all the affirmation. They need all the words of encouragement. They need... Uh, uh, they just, they, um, I've dated insecure people. I didn't marry an insecure person, praise Jesus. But I have, I have dated them. And they, what, what happens is you find your, your whole relationship and energy is consumed on trying to keep that person happy, on trying to meet their expectations, um, on trying to be everything that they need you to be. And it is exhausting. It is draining. If you've been there, you know what that feels like. And they need more because they're always looking for outside reassurance. An insecure person is always looking for someone on the outside to reassure them. They need, it's like they need to have someone. And if they don't have someone, they're not okay. They're not a whole person because they need someone constantly speaking into their life. Let's just, let's just think about it in the terms of movies. You guys ready? You guys remember that movie, The Notebook? <laughs> the notebook and the famous quote from the movie the notebook is this no matter what happens to us every day with you is the best day of my life <laughs> and I'll say this you say that when things are good but then when you had a fight about money or you had a fight about how it went last night all of a sudden my this is not the best day of my life okay actually looking at your face makes me real angry right now you know? So every day with you is not going to be the best day of my life. I mean, sure, in a perfect world, yes, because we're perfect people and we love Jesus so much and we're so secure, but most of us are still like in process with that, okay? Uh, here's another one. The Titanic. The Titanic. And <laughs> this is, um, you guys remember, the ship is already sinking and they're floating on, well, actually, most people are floating on those pieces of ship remains. And then there's Rose and poor, poor man guy is Jack, his name's Jack, is dangling there in the water. And she says, she's holding on to him, I'll never let go. I promise. And then she immediately lets go and he sinks to the bottom of the ocean. <laughs> <sighs> okay, I just have to point out, I, those, kid, those movies came out when I was a teenager. And um, can I just say, I, well, I'm probably a little bit critical. You, if you know me, you know I'm very upfront and honest with this. The Lord is dealing with me all the time on my ability to be super critical. Uh, anyway, but I remember those movies came out when I was a teenager, and people loved them. They were raving like, oh, the love. I, first of all, I've never loved love stories. Like, they're not, I want action, you know? Like, let's, let's, go, let's go do something. Um, let's blow something up, like, beat up people. I don't care, like, accomplish a purpose, you know? Falling in love, and I don't know. I love, I love, I love love, but not like that, okay? But I remember watching those movies, and I'm thinking, you people, you, not you people, but you people that I was with, you people like this? And here's why. Because both of those were affairs. Both of them. They were with other people, and then they fell in love over here. And I'm like, trash garbage. You can fall in love, but don't do it at the expense of not dealing with your stuff. Anyway, trash garbage. Uh, insecure people. We need stuff. We need people. We need affirmation from places we shouldn't be finding it, okay? Uh, and then there's Jerry Maguire. If you remember Jerry Maguire, this is like the most famous quote. Even if you've never seen the movie, you've heard it. You complete me. No, you don't. I love my husband 100%, but we do not complete each other. <laughs> that would be the worst. <laughs> because we're the best. We love each other. But marriage doesn't complete you. Christ and Christ alone completes you. This is, okay, this is my favorite quote to Elliot. You'll remember, I haven't said this in a long time because we had kids. This is my quote. <clears throat> You're my favorite human. <laughs> and that's what I used to say. You're my favorite human. And one time he was like, why, why is it human? Like, why isn't it person? You're my favorite person. And I was like, okay, and then I'm going to get real holy on you. I'm critical and then I'm holy. And this is why. This is why. I said, because God describes himself as one God in three persons. He's my favorite person. You're my favorite human. <laughs> 
<laughs> we want to be secure in Christ, in who he is and who we are in him. No other relationship or person is going to fulfill us or complete us like he does. There's a scripture, Colossians 2, 9, and 10. It says, for in Christ lives all the fullness of God in a human body. For in Christ lives all the fullness of God in a human body, which means if you're found in Christ, if, you're being, if you are on that redeeming journey where you, you've given your heart and your life to him and with all your heart you're trying to pursue him, it says the fullness of God is complete within a human body. So in each and every one of us, the fullness of God makes us complete. He makes us whole. Through your union with Christ, who is the head over every ruler and authority, the challenge is that everywhere you go, we hear counter-cultural, counter-scriptural messages. So even in the church, like I said, it's like if you're not married, you haven't arrived yet. You can't play in the big leagues. Uh, there must be something wrong with you if you're still single. You know, if you're over the age of 25 or whatever, and you're still single, it's like, oh. Like, maybe there's a tinge of, I don't belong here, or something's wrong with me, or something's missing, because I don't have another person to do life with. And so I want to say this to you. If you haven't heard this in a while, or you haven't heard this ever, you are valuable. And you have worth. And God created you as a whole person. And you don't lack anything when you're found in Christ. You are loved. You are treasured. You are enough. You're a gift. That's, that's what is the truth is you are a gift. And so because that is what is true, you don't have to settle. You don't have to settle for just any hot or warm body. Like whoever is around, you don't have to lower your standard because you feel like you haven't arrived yet. You're a secure, valuable, whole person who is a gift. Um, so I want to say this. We talked about insecure people, but let's talk about secure people. Oh, first of all, I wanted to say, just stop and say that I'm talking about dating and I'm a happily married woman. And so you're probably like, easy for you to say. Mm -hmm. You found the thing I'm looking for. And can I just say this? Before I was married, I was a secure person. I'm not saying I was perfect, but this is what I am saying. My life was defined by my relationship with Jesus and not what anyone else could give to me or bring to me. <clears throat> and so if you're not there, but you want to be, then I, I'm, I'm going to tell you to fix your eyes on Jesus and deal with that. Let him begin to work those things out in you. Because you may think, well, that's, that's fine, that's fine, that's fine, I'll get there. But it's when I get married that I'm going to become secure. It's when I get married that I'm going to feel, okay, can I tell you that marriage will just expose every insecurity you already had? <laughs> And now you got to look someone else in the face and tell them I'm insecure. That's the last thing on the planet you want to do. I've done it. Okay? We have had to work. We both came. We were, we were secure in Christ, but we still had our insecurities. And so we still have to deal with them. They don't just disappear. They get magnified. <laughs> so the more that you can deal with it beforehand, the better it is. Or you enter into your relationship and you know how to talk about stuff. You know how to have conflict. You know how to own the fact that I'm insecure and so I'm acting like an idiot. Okay? Because uh, it happens. For real, it happens. But I knew who I was. I was going places. My attitude in life was if I get married, I get married. And if I have kids, I get kids, but I am, I'm going places. Jesus has called me as a whole person to do things. He has made me who he made me, Tiffany, with a purpose. And I can go there and I can do that with or without the one. Because who's the one? He's the one. He's the one. Okay, so we want to be secure in Christ. Secure people need less and expect more. So if you're single and you have friends who say, man, you need to lower your standards so you can just get married, don't. If you are secure in Christ, you should have high standards because you're looking for the person, you know, you want to be the person the person you're looking for is looking for. And so if, they, if you haven't found them yet, don't lower your standards. Keep going. Keep doing what you're doing because you are a gift. Your place in life is a gift and you don't have to settle or lower your standards. Uh, when you have been forgiven by God, you've been called by God, you've been chosen by God, you are special. And there shouldn't be anything insecure about you and needing to lower your standards. So number two is we want to be strong in character. So maybe you say, I'm not married, so I can do whatever I want. <laughs> I can live however I want. I can do whatever I want. I can go here. I can go there. I can do this. I can do that. I'm not married. So maybe when I am married, I'll settle down and I'll find like a place in life. And maybe that's when I'll commit to church or that's when I'll commit to doing things with my family. Like when I settle down, I'll become that anchored person, you know, because right now I've got no one and nothing keeping me kind of anchored. Can I say this? You don't build a life of righteousness. You can write this down on a foundation of sin. 
You don't build a life of righteousness on a foundation of sin. So what you are, big overall thought for that is what you are doing today matters and today impacts tomorrow. Because if you're living your life, if, you, if there's an idea in your head of who you want to be when you are married, what you want that marriage to look like, if you're not doing it today, you're not going to find it tomorrow. And so with, with or without that person or that, that you know, the, the one, he's the one, but in our minds, with or without that person, I'm going to live like I want my marriage to look like. And so we're just going to talk briefly about what strong character looks like. There are five qualities that Paul highlights for Timothy, okay? Timothy was a young man who led the church. First Timothy 4.12 says this, a lot of times we look at, okay, I'll read the scripture. Don't let anyone think less of you because you are young. A lot of times we use this scripture to talk to young people. Can I tell you that Timothy was closer to my age? Okay. Uh, don't let anyone, th- you're like, you're still young. That's fine. Don't let anyone think less of you because you are young. Be an example to all believers in what you say, in the way you live, in your love, in your faith and in your purity. So that was words. So we're going to, what you say is your words. So what is, here's a question, what's coming out of your mouth? Is it mature content that you shouldn't speak like? So in the dating scene and in the dating world, when you're going out and you're doing the stuff, what kind of verbiage and language is, is coming out of your mouth? Because what comes out of your mouth is what's in your heart. So are your conversations appropriate for family settings? Are your conversations appropriate for your circle of friends? Are you like how, what is, what's going on in there? Are you too different people in two different spaces or are you one complete whole person who is the same everywhere you go with the words that you say number two is what the way you live which is your behavior so that's the question how is it that we're living and what is it that we're doing how are we spending our time and again in that dating scene it's like I work 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 I'm, I'm secure I'm confident I I do my work I'm a great employee but over here I'm like this completely separate dating person who's just trying to find the one and I'll do anything and I'll act any way as long as I can earn that person. And so I'm going to come back to be a consistent person. What is it that we're doing with our life? The the third one is in your love. So how are we treating other people? Are we loving and kind or are we judgmental and critical and harsh? Because that when you get married, that critical spirit doesn't disappear. (laughs) It just gets highlighted. So how are we loving people? And I'll say this, if we're not married and we feel like we're not a whole person, then maybe we're dealing with an issue of not feeling loved. And if we're not feeling loved, it is really hard to give love. It is more easy to, it is easier to become critical and judgmental because we're not, we're not in a place where we're receiving love. We're feeling like we're being neglected or rejected. And so I would say, let the Lord come into that space and deal with that and work there because you are loved. You are loved. And so allow the Lord in, to see in your circle of friends those places and spaces where, man, those people do love me. And so I can, I can begin to think differently. And then faith. It says, in your faith, which is Not just that I believe in Jesus and I go to church, because can I tell you that you're not looking for just someone who says they believe in Jesus, but you're looking for someone who is defined by Jesus. They don't just go to church, they're a part of the church. Uh, And so in our faith, it's not something that we just say we believe, but it's evident in the way that we live our lives. We are anchored and centered on Christ, and it is evident and is apparent. That is my faith, and my faith has defined me, and it has shaped me. And then purity in your purity is basically, you guessed it, sexual and integrity. Uh, But sometimes the dating scene can be overwhelmed with, you could describe it as as lust. You In the movies, the notebook and the Titanic, and there it's an overwhelming message of lust and desire. And those desires are not bad. Those those hungerings and those cravings and, and wanting that to be fulfilled is not bad. But can I say this? If we're going to romance novels or we're, we're, we're watching stuff on TV or we're watching stuff elsewhere, or we're like dreaming about it in our minds. Some of us are setting ourselves up for failure because your husband is never going to be like the man in the romance novel. And so you will always feel let down. You will always be comparing who you have in front of you to what never existed because it was made up. You know, you're, 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 ah! 
<laughs> your wife or the future one may not satisfy you in the bedroom and it's because she's being compared to something else and in our hearts we know that's not perfect and we know that's not what we want but somehow it still happens and so we guard our purity by choosing not to engage in things and so the question then is just and you can ask yourself that is what I'm engaging in producing the kind of fruit I want in my life am I using words of affirmation for my husband or am I judging him because he's not measuring up to what I thought he should be guess what they're not ever going to be like you thought they should be they are who they are and we got to we got to engage in the real world and live in the place that we're living because this is real life we're not going to clean our act up when real life happens we're in it this is real life and every moment everything we do today matters Number three is we want to be planted in community. So if you want a relationship that is strong, solid, and thriving, you're going to be surprised by how much your life is defined by the community you, you live in, the people you do life with. You can write this down. The strength of your community will shape the quality of your life. Every single time there's a famous saying, show me your friends and I'll show you your future. Proverbs 13, 20 says it like this. Walk with the wise and become wise. Associate with fools and get in trouble. <laughs> you guys can think back to your childhood. When you had good friends, you made good choices, and life was great. When you were a teenager and you chose questionable friends, all of a sudden you was grounded. You know, like, <laughs> walk with the wise and become wise, associate with fools, and get in trouble. You get to decide who you do life with. You get to decide who your friends are. You get to decide who you are in community with. And so if you want to be married, if that's something you're desiring in life, then I would say surround yourself with good, strong marriages. Look for people and couples that you can be friends who know how to fight because marriage will have conflict. And you need to find people who can have conflict well. They don't avoid it, and they don't, they don't play dirty, but they have conflict, and they talk about real issues because you're going to need that in life. Um, you should also surround yourself with good, strong singles. You know, people who are headed in the same direction as you. Maybe it's platonic and the fact that your guys aren't interested in each other, but you're able to hang out. Maybe not even men and women. I'm just talking about like, you, you need to have good friends who are in your same space in life that you can engage and share uh, and connect with. And I said it up front, it's really hard for me to in, be intentional about finding community because I'm good. I like my life. I like my family. You know, like I don't, I don't want to go out and expose my heart to, to meeting new people, but it is important that we find ourselves and work hard to be planted in a good community. Surround yourself with like-minded people, not people who are exactly like you and who agree with everything you say, but like-minded in that they're going to affirm you with the scripture because that's what you're defined by. And they're going to bring you back to, to the person of Jesus. Um, and if you find yourself right now wanting to be marriageable, but you feel like I'm not sure if I have good community, then, uh, then I would say today's a great time to start assessing the community and the people around you. Because what will happen is one day, if and when you do get married, you're going to get in a fight. And the people in your community, they're either going to say, who do they think they are? Just go, just go do your own thing. They'll, they'll encourage you in one of two directions. Or you're going to go to your community and they're going to say, you know what, that's really tough, but you need to pray about it. And while you're praying about it, you need to get back there and do the right thing. And you're going to hate hearing that on the outside. But on the inside, you're going to be like, ah, I know that's right. And, you know, you have a community of people who are behind you and for you. And so you're not doing it alone. And so your community is going to impact the quality of your life. Um, so to find the, the yourself right now, just say, you know, keep, move, keep moving toward Jesus. And I want us to check out this video. We're going to talk about dating. So check out this video uh, from Destiny and Victor. I'm Destiny Gonzalez. I'm Victor Garcia. I've been going for almost two years to Lifeline. And I met Victor at church at Lifeline. His favorite food... That one I don't know because he just eats everything unless it's spicy. I'm gonna guess steaks. Yeah. Okay, cool, got it. Her favorite food uh, is anything with chicken. I do love chicken, but it's sushi. Oh. We just never yeah. eat it. Close. Don't really <laughs> so go. close. They're very similar. Oh my gosh. <laughs> okay, uh, the weirdest thing that I did to get his attention is to 
mention that my middle name is an X-Men character, Mystique. She went up to me and, and let me know that her middle name was Mystique. And I wasn't quite sure why she told me that until afterwards and I processed it. She saw my backpack with like superhero stuff on it, so. The weirdest thing that he does is when he leaves, he's just gone. He does not say goodbye to anybody. It's just like he's there and all of a sudden Victor's disappeared. It's weird, like family events, parties, church, leadership meetings, he's just gone. It's weird. <laughs> the characteristics that drew me in from Destiny were the fact that she came off real confident with the way that she approached me. I don't think um, there's a lot of women out there who would have just taken these, the steps that she took to try to talk to me. Characteristics that drew me in to Victor was his kindness and the way that he treated everybody. Anybody that he talked to, it was always open and such kindness and I really, I think that's a huge attractive characteristic to have for somebody. Um, and then also his consistency at church. I saw him every Sunday and he served and he always seemed like he was positive about it. So those were important to me. Starting this relationship, right from the beginning, I come with two kids. We kept them separate, you know, for a long time. But I do think that one of the challenges starting dating when you have kids, um, there's several, there's so many, but you know, knowing when is the right time and also like considering their feelings because it's not ever gonna be just about me. And then also on the other side, um, Another struggle sometimes or a thought was, you know, the other co-parent. Sometimes that can be kind of hard to navigate, like when to meet or time together. And, you know, so those have been some struggles, but some highlights have been kind of once we did introduce each other, seeing their relationship with Victor and, you know, just seeing how they interact with each other and seeing how he is in that setting and how they, you know, have grown to love him. and. You know, that's been a big highlight is just watching their own relationship with him. There was never a situation where I felt like I was uncomfortable about it. And I think there was a lot of prep work prior to dating her and getting to know the kids, you know, eventually. Because of like, you know, past relationships that didn't work out. We always worry about um, things getting done on our time. And there's this constant pressure for us to to like, like for me, you know, as I'm getting older, like, oh man, I gotta have children. Oh man, I gotta have a, a family. Um, and I, you know, once I really took my relationship with Jesus more seriously, um, it, it, I was able to self-reflect and look back at all the great relationships that didn't work out and, and learn from that because I knew that he, he had a purpose for me and it wasn't on my time, it's on his time when I was gonna be ready for it, right? So. So I think that was um, that was the biggest thing in terms of me dating someone with children um, is more so the fact that I think I think God did some prep work with me um, be, before getting to this relationship. I do think that abstinence is important when you're dating, when you're with somebody. It's a union, you know, when you. It's like a soul transfer almost, you know, you get stuff and from the other person and I just think it's important to, you know, wait and take your time to build up to that and it's not something that you just want to give away so freely and easily. Um, it's important to hold on to it. I think the best way to practice abstinence in your relationship when you're dating, a lot of our dates there are common places, the movies restaurants, family events, um, lunches after church. You know, they're just, they're all places out in the public or with the kids to the movies. Piece of advice for, Christ, for Christians who are, who are, you know, wanting to date is, you know, exhibit that patience, right? Know that, that it's not gonna be on your time when you want something done. That, that God's gonna have a, a purpose for you as to when that happens. And I think when you look at roadblocks that come along the way, um, see that as an opportunity to learn from it. Once you continue to keep your eyes on God and, and you just stay consistent with Him, 
um, he'll, he'll realize, okay, now I think you're ready. So exhibit the patience um, and, and be intentional in what, in what you, you want to happen in your relationship. Um, and then if you get all that situated, it's gonna be a lot easier and it's gonna be when you're not even looking. Um, that you find someone who who fits what you who fits what you want in a person. One piece of advice that I would give Christians that are dating is uh, to have the most honest and open communication that you can, um, because that's been that's been huge for us building in what we have. It was paired with the patience and, you know, it being all in God's time and not when I want it or how I want it to go, communicating my feelings and being vulnerable with Him, with my emotions and what's happening in my head, that has been the biggest struggle that we've had to work up to. Um, that's been huge for our relationship. If I, I really want someone to, you know, take away from this is a you have a couple choices when, when an argument or something arises. One is you can continue to poke the bear and create more of a hostile situation and make it worse. Or the other is you just don't do that, right? Sometimes we just have to process what's happening and not react in the, in the moments where they're the most intense, right? Once, once things are calm, then get back to it, communicate. For me, my mentality is if, if we always are striving to be Christ-like, um, we follow, I mean, we have examples from Jesus, right? So because of those examples from Jesus, for me, um, I always try to make sure that I'm not reacting in those moments um, and hopefully get to some common ground. And so I think that's the biggest, the biggest takeaway is if you're really keeping God here and here, you'll know um, what choice is best because he'll tell you. Awesome. Uh, if you guys aren't aware of the update, Destiny and Victor are engaged. Woo they made it. They didn't make it yet. They're going to be married. <laughs> Horrible. Watch your words, Tiff. Um, okay. Um, what, I, what I love about this, though, is Destiny and Victor, they were minding their own business, moving towards Jesus. They both had a desire in their heart to be married, but they were planted in community. They were strong in character, and they were secure in Christ, and they were moving that, in that direction alone. Uh, in, a, in a community of people, but they were secure, they were strong in character, and they were planted in community. And eventually when they looked over, they saw someone else who was secure in Christ, strong in character, and planted in community and moving in the same direction. And so to all those who are in the dating scene, just do that. Be secure in Christ, be strong in character, be planted in community, and keep moving forward. And maybe, just maybe, one day you'll look over and you'll see someone in that same direction. One of the things we're gonna talk about in upcoming weeks is singleness. And we talked about singleness being a gift. So you feel like, like I still, I want that, I'm doing that, but I'm not there yet. Then just continue. And I know you're like, shut up. But just continue to trust the Lord because there's a gift in there and you are a gift. Uh, and this time and this space, you are able to bless and to provide. So no matter where you are, you're a blessing and there is favor and there is hope and there is goodness because our God is who our God is, amen. Let's go ahead and Psalm 34, 3. I just want to close with this scripture. It says, come, let us tell of the Lord's greatness. Let us exalt his name together. And so that's when we get married. We're, we're now, we're better together. We're coming together and we're going to do that. But even if we're single, we're planted in community. And so we're coming and we're together exalting the name of Jesus. And we're being found in places and spaces where we are known and loved by God. And we are known and loved and seen by people. Let's go ahead and pray. If you would close your eyes and bow your heads. Father, we thank you so much for who you are. Lord, that you are good and you are awesome. 
Lord, and no matter where we are in life, you have a purpose and a plan for us, and our purpose isn't marriage. Our purpose is to be wholly devoted to you, and when we do that, when we find ourselves wholly devoted to you, Lord, you come in and you move in ways that only you can move. Lord, you restore, you bring hope, uh, you speak into the places of our life where we didn't even know we needed you to speak to us. And so I thank you, Father, that you have done that and you are doing that. I thank you that you are bringing hope and encouragement to those who, who are single, those who are looking to be married. Uh, Lord, but maybe there's a stirring in their heart. Lord, you are bringing healing about who you have created them to be. Lord, and you are reminding each of us, even if we are married or we're widowed, that we are whole people because you don't, you don't create accidents and you don't create half people. We're not half people moving in to find half people. We're whole people who move across the planet. And so I thank you for that. And if there's anybody in the room who would say, I, I wanna be a whole person and I wanna be found in Christ and I wanna have that confidence and that security and I feel like I haven't had that, but I want that, then I just want you to, if you would be comfortable lifting up your hand, nobody's looking around, but saying, I wanna be confident and secure in who Christ made me to be, that I'm a whole person. I see your hand, I see your hand, amen. I see your hand I see your hand amen God is so good and he's already on the move he's already bringing restoration he's already ministering to your heart church would you just repeat this after me father God I thank you for your love I thank you that you see me I thank you that you have found me and I thank you that you love me I thank you that you gave your son that I could be made completely whole I receive your love. I receive your transformation. I receive the person of the Holy Spirit who's going to lead me every day. In Jesus' name, amen.